Uh, respecting local culture and behaviors here on transitional justice on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, uh, and the handsome young man is Mauricio Del Arujo, uh, who is a Brazilian working in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, who joins us right now from Ethiopia. And it's really early in the morning. Uh, welcome to the show, Mauricio. Hello and aloha for you, Jay, and for everyone that uh, are watching us now. Oh, great to have you on. So uh, let's let's first, um, you know, figure out how you got from Brazil uh, to Addis Ababa. How did that work and why? So I'm uh, working now as a senior lawyer investigation for a PAJ, uh, and we came to Addis, uh, to Ethiopia, to help the, uh, the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission uh, to deliver training and to mentoring them and to do the best we can to, to help them to uh, in uh, human rights uh, violation investigation and all the, the case that we have so far. So what does Project Expedite Justice do in Ethiopia? We're supporting not only the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, but another other CSOs uh, the, that basically not only in training and preparing and capacity building here, uh, but also uh, to mentoring and to be with them in the investigations uh, about uh, any human rights uh, violations that they may have here. And as a senior lawyer, what do you do in uh, Addis Ababa for Project Expedite Justice on, the, on these issues? At this time, I'm working straight with the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission uh, to build their capacity and to deliver a very comprehensive training in uh, human rights investigations uh, due to the needs they have so far. Okay, now let's get into it. Um, what kinds of cases um, is Project Expedite Justice doing, investigating and, and examining and prosecuting as necessary in Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia? Unfortunately, uh, they're passing through a, a very bad time now to a very serious conflict. And we have all, all kinds of uh, crimes against uh, humanity. Uh, we have some uh, war crimes. We have some uh, serious violations uh, in, uh, in, this, in, in terms of uh, human rights violations. So that's it, basically. They, we have the whole package, I would say. Yeah. And, and, uh, you, and you investigate this for purposes of prosecuting uh, where? In what courts, in what uh, venues? Uh, here, we try to assist them to bring the cases to the local justice system. Uh, once they are not signed, uh, they are not part, uh, partners of the uh, Roman Institute. So we do uh, this job for the local justice to take care of it. Okay. So um, this, a lot of this depends on the definition of war crimes uh, and atrocities and violations of human, human rights. Where do you get those definitions? Uh, we get from the, the, the international framework, of course, uh, all the protocols and uh, institutes that uh, uh, they rule the international justice. So the same definitions would apply to whatever is going on in uh, Ukraine, right? Yeah, since the international uh, criminal law uh, nowadays is uh, growing, is coming, is a process of growing uh, for the last 20 years. And uh, yeah, we have uh, the very same uh, names and the very, uh, very same framework for that. What differs is the, the, the kind of court or the kind of justice system that uh, is going to be used to, to trial and to bring these people to justice. So if I tell you that the Russians are uh, focusing on destroying residences and um, other you know, civilian buildings and structures um, and killing people and women and children in the process, uh, and if I tell you that I have video of this happening, real time. Uh, and if I tell you that um, some Russians are admitting it, including generals, um, is that adequate proof of war crimes in the international arena? For sure. For sure. It's uh, more than proof. Uh, 
because we don't have to, we don't have to go uh, to the beyond the reasonable doubt in terms uh, of uh, when we're talking about international criminal justice. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, the international criminal justice is still a process that depends on uh, the binding of the countries with uh, some treaties, some protocols. So this could be uh, this could be uh, a puzzle at this time, I would say. Yeah, but ultimately it will get ironed out. Um, do you think um, you know people like you, like Project Expedite Justice, will go there um, and will get that video and get that proof and get statements and whatever you need to get in order to prove those cases? Um, sure. Is this if something we have, that's uh, if we have the opportunity, sorry. Uh, if we uh, have the, the opportunities, uh, of course, we need, uh, we must go there. We must do our job, no matter what the result at this time. Uh, talking about uh, criminal justice is more a matter to uh, uh, reach the justice and to wait for the reparation and for uh, the eventually criminal trials and so on. But the, but, uh, the most important is to do the job and not to expect the results at, the, at this time, I would say. Okay. So I guess the big question is um, evidence because you can't mm -hmm. even get to first base without evidence. And in the case of Ukraine, there seems to be a, a plethora of evidence from all sides and all ways, all provable, all authenticatable and so forth. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not, that's not always the case. It's not always the case. We have people who are willing to come forward and testify and tell you and authenticate you know what is happening um and i guess um you know the concern that project expedite justice and you as counsel for them would always be concerned with um is 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 proving it up in a way so that a court concerned a court that is hearing the evidence will agree that the evidence proves the case so are there issues about that elsewhere we we know that in ukraine it's pretty easy to prove it up. Um, it's, it's all around us every day on the television. Um, but um, what about what about Ethiopia? What about other places in East Africa? Um, how much, how easy or hard is it to get the necessary evidence to prove the case? I would say that uh, actually uh, nowadays is even easier to to get any kind of proof uh, of this nature since uh, with the technology, unfortunately, uh, the technology is used for the good and not, for the not so good things. And uh, people all the time, they are filming, they are uh, recording, they are doing a lot with their smartphones. And even uh, trust is today, they can, they can be seen uh, by the perpetrators or anyone that is watching the atrocity as something that is good and it would be good to uh, to post on on, on media, on social media or something like that. So it's not that difficult to get these proofs today. Uh, what I think the, the tricky, tricky job is to investigate the crimes that happened in the very past. Uh, so we, it's more difficult to get the witnesses, to get some kind of recording, some kind of uh, more substantial proofs. But uh, nowadays, Unfortunately, it's being very easy to do that. Ah, so it's a question of when this happened and, and whether that technology was available at the time it happened. Yeah, of course, we need to check. We need to, uh, to, to evaluate these kind of proofs. But at the same time, uh, unfortunately, they, they, do, they do films. They do uh, a lot of, uh, they, they produce a lot, a lot of material that, uh, easily can be, uh, in, not easily, but in an in a easier way would be very uh, useful for the courts. You know, I'm thinking of a movie that was made uh, called Winter of Fire. And it was about um, the, I want to call it the protests uh, in, uh, in Kyiv in, in Ukraine in 2013 and 2014. And the Russians were there uh, shooting people in the street. And the people were not armed. They were, you know, peaceful protesters, and there were, and there were snipers on top of the buildings, Russian snipers, just shooting them dead. Um, and uh, the the protesters 
had little cameras, you know, Sony cameras, for example, fit in the palm of your hand or use cell phones. And, and they took pictures of all of this. Um, does that happen in East Africa too, where people take pictures with their cell phones or with small cameras and turn them over to you and say, here, here is proof? Unfortunately, we do. Uh, they are part of cases that are still on investigation. And I had the access to some movies uh, with this nature, with very bad atrocities uh, are, are happening. But at the same time, we need to be very cautious in the whole process because after all, uh, the transitional justice and uh, the international criminal justice uh, has a lot of uh, politics on it. It's involved because of the sovereign of the countries, uh, because a lot of international relations. So we need to be aware of that as well. Of course, this uh, cannot be a blockage for our work, but we have to take uh, in consideration as well, unfortunately. Well, I want to drill down on that because that applies, um, you know, in every every circumstance, every venue. It's not just um, getting the evidence, and um, it sounds like these days you can get the evidence more easily than in the past, um, but it's presenting the evidence to a tribunal that will, mm, that will listen. And, and, and more, than that, uh, more than that, we must have the political willingness to, to do something about it. And this is something that uh, don't belongs to, to the human rights practitioners in a way, it belongs to the governments. I understand. So if the government is really not inclined um, to do anything, to put it in court, to refer it for a, a trial or a tribunal, then nothing happens. You can have I all the evidence say, you want. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that they don't, uh, in general, I'm talking, uh, by the way, I'm talking in a general manner, okay? Not, uh, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about uh, specifically here in Ethiopia, but in a general manner with the governments, it's not they don't want to do uh, anything, but uh, the fact that the, the, the government, the host government is allowing to have some human rights investigation or some kinds of transitional justice process uh, doesn't mean that this is gonna be smoother or easier uh, for us to work. That's it. Mm. Well, we, we spoke um, in the title of the program that it was necessary to examine and appreciate local culture and local behavior. Uh, if you're going to do uh, you know, the, the investigation and prosecution of war crimes and atrocities. And uh, what I get from what you're saying, this, this, uh, this issue could come up in, um, well, not once you've investigated, then the question is whether the government, um, you know, the governmental institutions, structures, the political institutions and structures are going to do anything about it, uh, whether they're going to refer it to a, a trial or tribunal or court, how the judges in that court are going to react to it, uh, what kind of penalties the judges in that court are going to award um, once they do find somebody guilty. Um, and, um, and I suppose whether that, that will stick so that the individual who um, is, is sentenced to a particular sentence will actually serve the sentence rather than be let out at the next, uh, at the next political interval. Um, am I right? Uh, and can you tell me how the local culture, local behavior in a given place, whatever place it is, affects that? Yeah, that's the, 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 the good link about uh, what we've been talking so far and the importance of the to respect the local culture local behaviors and so on that i'm i'm really uh, like to talk about it because this is something that i lived that i experienced in all uh, kinds of uh, work i've been done so far and uh, this is uh, this is a kind of simple uh, simple uh, thing but at the same time it's very important for the success of the transitional process uh, process as a whole. Uh, as we told, the transitional uh, justice is a process, takes time. Any process takes some time. And as, soon, as long as we can 
what we can achieve, what we want, our objectives with the transition of justice is to bring some level of justice for the victims and also to make it possible to have some peace, some reconciliation in a, in a place that we have a conflict or post-conflict uh, situation. So, but in order to do that, I would make a parallel uh, with uh, some place that you are visiting. For example, if you visit me to come to your place and I'll be very glad to help you because you're, you're needing something. So you ask me to do that. Or for any reason, uh, I make you believe that you really need me at your place. So I go. When I arrive at your home, uh, it's very rude from me to say, hey, Jay, nice place here, but uh, it's very hot, huh? Or no, 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 this house doesn't have any kind of uh, warming system. So I don't like your table. And you know, I don't like the way you put the water in the fridge or something like that. Uh, after two minutes with me, even if you ask me to come, or even if I have a very great reputation to be a very uh, uh, personal, stylish organizer to your place, even I say, okay, get out of here because uh, this is my home and you are not respect me, uh, respecting me in any any kind of, uh, uh, any, any aspect. So this is something that uh, unfortunately I've seen happening many times when we talk about transitional system, uh, tra traditional justice systems and uh, uh, missions and any kind of uh, uh, situation that one organization is called to come to a country and to act in their country doesn't matter if the place is uh, passing through a conflict or not, doesn't matter how poor the country is, doesn't matter how, uh, uh, what's their level of culture, uh, culture. And again, when you talk about culture, we are always comparing to our culture. When uh, your standard of culture may be very similar to mine because we live in, this, in the same continent, and we have uh, mostly the uh, culture very similar, uh, but for others can be totally different. And that's something that almost nobody takes in consideration and should. And I'm talking about when you, uh, I have two, two, two points to stress here to highlight. First of 10, five plus five is equal to 10, right? But three, plus seven is also equal to 10. So first thing you have to keep in mind that you may have different ways to reach the same objective. The second thing is very important to take in, mind, to take in consideration, to bear in mind, is that uh, business are made B2B. This is what they say in the business uh, world. So your company is making business with my company. Your organization is making business with my country. But at the end, the relationships are made P2P. So people to people. If, you, if we don't understand that, we can jeopardize uh, the whole process. But normally we don't uh, take this in mind, in consideration. And uh, most of the people, unfortunately, unfortunately, most of the people that I've worked with, uh, they didn't have that in their minds. So it's really uh, important to not to waste time, but to spend our time, to invest our time before we start any kind of transitional, transitional justice process uh, to send one, two people, it's not uh, many people, it's not expensive, uh, you don't need to spend there a uh, whole year, but you need to have someone that goes to the place. And I mean, goes on the field, doesn't work if you just uh, research on Wikipedia or something like that. We must go, we must be uh, in the streets with these people. We must uh, live a little bit among them. Doesn't, ah, but you can say, but there's, there are a lot of, lots of uh, places 
that's impossible to go in the middle of the conflict. Uh, okay, but the countries, they're there since ever or since a long time. So it doesn't mean that we need to go during the conflict. I don't need to put you, put you, you, you on fire uh, in any place. But as long as you take these details that you know their behaviors, that you know their, their way of life and so on, it's, uh, it would be much easier the approach because the approach is uh, as important as the process as itself. As I just gave the example that me going to your place and I uh, would give another example that I think is very suitable here. Uh, when a friend of yours asks for your help, being economically or uh, psychologically, if you take a stance, like a superior stance, like, okay, I'm here to help to save your life, and I'm going to give you this money, so you, because I'm your saver, I'm the great guy, I'm the good guy, even if he needs this money desperately, he will take this money regretting already. Because people, when they need help, they feel shame. Nobody, nobody likes anyone coming from outside to do something that you're supposed to do and you didn't do for, by any reason, by corruption, by incompetence, by any kind of reason, or even because you really don't know how to do that. So uh, if your friend is needing you psychologically, it's even worse because if you come to him and say, oh, you know, I know that you, you are not able to live without me. So I'm here to try to save your soul. This is something, that, this is a human being's brain. There's a immediately blockage in your brain that you don't want to listen anymore. You don't want to talk to me anymore. You don't, you don't want to stand me anymore. So that's exactly what happens when we are, when any organization arrive to a place and take this kind of stance. Oh, I'm from any, any part of the world and I'm here. You are my, uh, my trainee. You're my, you're the guy that, you know, I, I have to, I, I will help you with all my wisdom, all my knowledge, all my know-how. No, this is, uh, is not this way that works. If you do that, you have this blockage on their minds. Uh, it's gonna be much difficult. And I've seen, I've experienced uh, missions that are uh, supposed to last like two years, three years, if they did in a good way, uh, lasting more than 10 years. Mm. And that's it. Yeah. So uh, I have many questions that come out of that. Please, uh, please. <laughs> uh, so uh, so uh, if you, and you answered one just now, I mean, if you don't do it right, if you don't understand, really truly understand, um, the local culture, the people, and their reaction to your effort to help them. Um, what's 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 the risk? Uh, of course, it's delay. It's harder for you to do your work. Um, but is it that they don't want to talk to you? Is it they don't want to testify? Is it that they don't want to tell you what happened? They don't want to. They don't want to claim. Uh, you know, make a claim in the first place or express the details of how they've been victimized. What, what happens in the worst case analysis? Yeah, the, when we talk about to extend a mission or something, we're talking about uh, spending more money. This is the, 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 last, uh, the, the, the least of uh, the, the consequence. But I'm gonna give you a, a, an actual example that happens to me. I won't say the country and the people because uh, the, the, the situation here is much more general than local. That's why we don't need to talk about countries and peoples, but uh, they, came, they came to me in a mission that I was back in 2000, 2000 something. And the local guy, I had a very good relationship with him and he came to me, he was my, my counterpart in the country. And he said, you know, mister, uh, you're doing a lot here, but by the time you leave, things are gonna 
be our way. It's going to be really, really bad. And I said, why? Because there was a situation uh, that they uh, wrongly, they divided two different groups from the time of the guerrilla, the time of they, they were trying to defend their lands. Uh, they were divided in different groups, but these groups, they came together to fight for the cause, but doesn't mean that they like each other. They just uh, were uh, partners at the time, just for a common objective. But right after the conflict gone, they become enemies again. But this time from different uh, uh, forces and different forces with uh, very heavy guns at the time. Because wow. we went there and we helped them uh, with the, our civil, uh, civilization and they have now very uh, heavy guns. So what happened after that? Of course, I, I took this information for my superiors, uh, but the whole process is very complex. It's not easy to change. Well, you uh, could make it worse. You could make things worse. Yeah, yeah. But what happened just after? Uh, at that time, there comes a time that the mission was very weak at the place because they were uh, withdrawing the mission. And when they realized that were, uh, that were not uh, people enough to stop the problem, they have a huge fight and most of them died in this fight right. just because they were waiting for us to, to leave the place. So that's, the, the po that's my point. If you don't interest yourself by uh, what they think, uh, what they do, how they work, how they, uh, they, they, they function, uh, you take a very serious risk to failure or to have a great uh, bad situation. Is it, is it risk to you, you personally as well? I take some risks, but uh, I would say that they are very controlled. Like uh, if you walk on the streets uh, without any 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 uh, protection or bodyguards or inside cars or something, you take the risk to be pickpocketed, to uh, to be uh, annoyed by them or something like that. But at the same time, uh, human beings are human beings everywhere. So you have the good people that they are just like, maybe you can cause some interest on them as uh, I can do the, this example from here now. Uh, when I walk in the streets, I, it's kind of amusing because uh, everybody wants to take pictures with you. They, they, tr <laughs> they, yeah, they try to disguise. And then when I realize they're taking pictures of me or something like that, or they even approach me and ask me for a picture. I, I was in the National Museum last weekend and I had my, my cell phone because I was taking, taking pictures of the uh, Lucy. The, uh, our ancestors are all in these museums, amazing. And then uh, one guy came and said, hey, sir, would you mind to take a picture? And I said, of course. So I took his camera to take his picture. And he said, no, no, no. I want to take a picture with you. And I said, OK, let's do a selfie then. Uh, but th that, that's the risk, I think, Jake. When you believe uh, in your work and when you're prepared to do a few jobs, it's just like that. You take the normal risk of any, any people walking the streets. The great difference is that, is that I'm having great experience that normally uh, people that works with uh, the, 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 the general staff that works with uh, traditional uh, justice, they come, they have drivers, they have uh, uh, vehicles, they go from the office building to the hotel or something like that. And this is why I'm calling the attention to the human rights practitioners, uh, not the organizations, the organizations they have all done, they have all set, but uh, for the practitioners to have this special attention on the local people. That's what I'm talking about. So do they, do they know you? Do they know Project Expedite Justice? Uh, is it a question of the credibility of your organization or is it um, merely a question of the way you conduct yourself in dealing with people individually? Well, of course, the, the reputation of the, the organization comes first, always. And um, we have uh, several very serious organizations, not several, but many 
serious organizations that they they have the willingness to do they they really can do something they have a very uh, political power they have money they have everything and uh, the organizations uh, in a general manner they are very well respected especially here PAJ is very well respected uh, but again if you don't do your personal job in terms of uh, respecting and uh, relating to them and showing uh, interest for their culture and so on, uh, it's, much, it's gonna be much more difficult. I have another ex good example for you. Uh, here, they normally uh, eat with their hands. And uh, I was waiting with them. And then uh, the, the, my counterpart here, my, my local buddy, he's amazing and he's teaching me a lot. And he came and say, hey Mauricio, you're eating like a baby. And I say, how come? I'm eating like a baby. I'm eating like you with the hand. <laughs> and he, he said just like that. Ah, but you know, you take with three fingers. Just babies do that. You must take with the five fingers. And I said, oh, okay, I, I learned another <laughs> one. And so uh, this is the rich part of the experience that uh, I regret uh, when I see some colleague of mine uh, coming in a mission or in a situation like that and saying, I don't want to know. I don't like these people here. I can't stand anymore. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. So man, if you think like that, you're not tailored for the job. That's yeah. why I'm, I'm calling the people, I'm calling the practitioners to think about this. Yeah. So what about um, language? I mean, uh, I don't think, they don't speak a lot of Portuguese in Ethiopia, but they probably speak some, <laughs> some Italian. They probably speak yeah. some English, uh, maybe what Swahili? What do they speak in, in Ethiopia? It's amazing because, uh, of course, they don't speak uh, Portuguese, uh, of course, uh, but they speak some. There, there's an interesting thing here that I just learned. Uh, when they go to the high school, the high school is done in English to make them uh, practice, to make them learn a foreign language uh, in a forced way because they, they all the subjects are in English in the high school. So most of them, they speak some English, and which is very interesting because their, their language, their um, Amharic, it's uh, a millennial language, but it's very difficult. So far I got a, a phrase book from Lonely Planet and I'm dealing to, to say something like, thank you, I'm Sagnalo or something like that, but I'm learning, I can do that. I can do. What about the buddy you talked about? I was going to ask you about that. I mean, wouldn't it be helpful if you went into this family's house, for example, with someone else who was familiar with their language, their customs, their way of, you know, interacting? Uh, wouldn't that be a, a, a better approach? Totally. This is uh, all about, uh, I'm saying, uh, about we have this uh, research work before we come. Uh, he's my counterpart here. He is from PAJ. Uh, so PAJ uh, is very uh, in, concerned about having local staff. And this is gold because as long as you have uh, local people here, I have him and I have my, my other partner. Uh, she works with me at the office. So both of them, they are PAJ uh, staff and they are teaching me uh, a lot. But again, I had to, when I arrived, I... How I, long ago was that, Mauricio? It was, uh, that's my fourth week here. I'm going to be here for the next five months. So, uh, yeah, it's been one month almost. And uh, uh, before I arrived, I was making contact with them and asking for tips, for any kind of uh, information they could give me. Uh, I put myself totally at their disposal because that's our job. I'm not here to serve me, to serve myself uh, or to serve even PAJ. I'm here to serve them. I'm here to serve their people, their country. That's, I think, is the mindset we should have. Well, that, learning that mindset, learning the cultural interactions, um, seems to me it goes beyond uh, Addis Ababa. It goes to uh, every place in Africa. Um, and in fact, every place in the developing world, for that matter. And so uh, theoretically, anyway, 
um, PEJ, Project Expedite Justice, and organizations like it um, should pay very close attention to this um, because this is always, uh, it always gives them a benefit in terms of um, engaging with people and getting evidence. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's why we're, we're uh, everywhere I go or every place I have the opportunity to work or every organization, I try to bring these ideas to focus because this, again, it's, uh, it's uh, so obvious for the organization. For example, if my memory serves me, there's a report from the general, uh, general secretary general from 2004, I guess. Uh, and it talks about transitional just uh, the, the transitional justice and rule of law in areas of conflict and post-conflict societies. So in this section six, uh, it's written there uh, in by this UN report. It's written there that we should assess the local uh, the local politics and the local uh, capacity building. So, which means that uh, it's uh, totally uh, for the organizations. It's very clear that we must approach them and to uh, work with them within their culture, then their way of life. But for the people, uh, the, the 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 practitioner, the people that goes on field, is not like that. I I can feel that it's not everyone that thinks uh, in this sense. They, they, we have uh, uh, very good technicians. We very good because in transitional, transitional justice is holistic. So you have uh, judges, prosecutors, uh, lawyers, uh, police officers. You have everyone, and depending on their their, their mind or their uh, their background, their experience, they go straight for the technical part. And of course, it's important if you have people killing people in some place. Uh, you. Uh, of course, you want to stop that at any cost. But at the same time, when you forget these things that we discussed so far, the process could be uh, very difficult. Yeah, much more. Well, difficult. so are you, you you said that this is this is um, a, a few months uh, uh, posting for you, and then you'll go somewhere else, maybe somewhere else in Africa, um, sub-Saharan Africa, Central Africa, what have you. Um, Will you have to relearn? Will you have to learn new culture, new customs, new All behaviors in order to deal there? Um, All the time. Yeah. All the time. Uh, interesting. Because, for example, in Asia, uh, we, we need to, to be very careful when we, when we deal with other cultures. Not careful, but aware that, yeah, they are different. We are different. Uh, your culture, that's very similar to mine, we have different uh different habits different uh, behaviors it's simple like that if you go and uh, you cannot assume that what is right for you may be right for me that that's the point for example if you go to asia uh, in Tha let's use thailand as, as an example uh, if you go to thailand and you and you tap a kid's uh head uh, this is maybe in brazil it's very common to do that we when we see a beautiful uh, child, we say, oh, you're so beautiful and look like this. This is nothing for us. For them, you're cursing the kid to have oh, a very bad future. You really have to know that. You have to know yeah, that. You know, so that, that's very, it's a simple thing that's simple for us, not for them. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing that you need to be aware of because uh, when you show them uh, that you, at least you're trying learning this, that you, at least you're trying to respect as much as you can, because of course, you're gonna make mistakes because we are from different cultures. We're gonna do some, uh, some things sometimes that is not so polite or not so good for them. But as long as you, as you show this, that uh, you really, uh, they really matter to you, you have a totally different experience. Totally. Well, I get out of the, all of this is that you have to be, um, you know, aside from being a, a lawyer, a prosecutor, an investigator, um, you have to be a diplomat uh, at, at, the, at the ground level. You have to be a diplomat with the people individually in their homes, on the streets, uh, wherever you deal with them. 
And, I and would say every uh, single thing. <laughs> yeah, if you allow me, I would say not a diplomat, but uh, we have to say human. We have to say human beings uh, that understand the other human beings are our brothers, our sisters, and we just need to respect them the very same way we want to be respected. It's very simple. Well, thank you, Mauricio. We're out of time, but I really uh, have enjoyed this, this discussion with you. It's been very nutritious. Mauricio, the, the Araujo, Araujo, Arujo, Arujo. Arujo. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Uh, I have to say you are such a great person. Uh, I don't know you personally, but it's a, it's a really pleasure to have this chat with you because you are a very, a very pleasable person. Thank you very much, Mauricio. May I say the same for you? I have enjoyed this conversation. I hope we can do it again. Me too. Thanks a lot for everyone that's uh, watching us and malahu. Mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs> Aloha. Uh, <laughs>